Hi everyone, it's me, Marcy Lamberson, in my studio, as you can probably tell with all the stuff behind me. Today, we're gonna practice a little lamp work alchemy. We are going to change silver into gold, and it's so easy. Let me show you how using just clear glass and silver foil. I'm gonna flip the phone around, pop it in the holder, and we'll get started. Okay, let's see whether this works. Got it in the holder. And let me just scoot this over a tiny bit and I'll show you what I've got. Now, when I'm buying silver, foil, or leaf, I have to think about two different things. One of them is how thick do I want it because the foil is thicker than the leaf. And let me show you the foil. The foil is easy to handle. You can pick it up, you can tear it, you can cut it, you can do what you want with it. And it's the foil that I generally use instead of the leaf. The leaf is much thinner and it's harder to handle. So it comes in these packets and this is a full sheet. You don't always need this much. It depends on what you're doing and it lasts for quite a while. Often, see, I will tear it in half or in pieces and see how it, easy it is for me to do? I'm gonna put that down. Now, the other thing is, I wanna show you how it works and how I turn it into gold. So I want a dark background so you can see easily. And I've chosen Creation is Messy's Blueberry, which is one of their newer glasses. I kinda of like this color. It's kind of a deep blue with a touch of purple in it. And we're gonna use Effetrays, just plain old clear. You can use other clears, but you want to test some first to see how much gold you get out of it. Okay, so let me get my glasses on. Start my torch, and you can see I haven't been able to clean it. Got a little mess right there. I'm hoping that doesn't smoke things up too much. Okay, so as soon as I sit down, we can get moving. Here we go. I need to have a base bead to show you. So let me get out one of my mandrels. This is just a 332nd mandrel. And on it I have dip and go blue sludge or whatever that's called, which is the kind of bead release that a lot of people who do sculpture use. And that's what I do primarily. So that's the only kind I really have on hand. And here's some of the creation is messy. I'm going to just heat this sucker up and get some melted onto my rod so I can show you the fun stuff. So um, I have other clears that I use with silver foil to get the gold effect. And what I like about it is if you have a clear rod, not boro, but maybe 96 or 90, you can do it with other clears. Don't mix it with other COEs, but sometimes you just want kind of a clear and goldy colored bead. It's perfect. I have some very old clear that came from another country and uh, they decided not to make any more of that glass, but it uh, doesn't fit 104 or 90 or 96 or anything. So I saved that beautiful clear um, and I use it with gold foil and make some really pretty Christmas ornaments during that time of year and other fun things that I want to look gold and fancy. So we're just making a basic bead because we're here to show you about the other stuff and I'm going to marble it in just a second. I don't normally make traditionally shaped beads so this one might be a little imperfect and I don't really care about that. I just wanted to have a large enough area to show you what I'm doing. And don't forget, I think while I'm finishing making this up, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe to my station, my uh, YouTube station, or also find me on Facebook, both under Marcy Lamberson. I'm just giving it a little marver. This is uh, my Japanese marble. It's called the Kote Marble, and I love it. Okay, so we're just kind of evening up the surface a little, making it not perfect, but okay. 
So what I want to do is heat up the base bead and then I'm going to lay the silver over the top and I'm not going to put it into the flame. I'm going to heat up my clear and put it over the silver. And you're going to melt some of the silver in and you just can't help it. That's okay. You won't have gold covering it 100%. The smaller the pieces you put on that you can cover immediately, the easier it will be. Let's tear off a couple of pieces. We can always add a little more on. Okay. So I've got some pieces to add on. I want to heat this up. I don't want it red hot that the um, silver is going to melt upon contact. What I want is for the heat to sink in, so as I'm messing around with putting the clear over the top of it without reheating it, I um, won't lose my heat. So, let me just get a pair of my trusty old needle noses. And the bead is warm. I'm not going to go near the flame, but I'm going to pop the silver on. And I'm pressing down as I'm putting it on. And I'm trying to move rather quickly. I didn't cover it 100% as you can see. That's okay. Okay, so you take your marber, make sure that it's pressed on, working quickly. Pressed in, because if it isn't pressed in, it's just gonna all float away. And now let's get the clear glass, the Epitre. tray. I'm gonna heat this up. This is old, old stuff. Normally, I would pick off the end. Can you see how it's a little messy there? What I'll just do is do this. See, I'm still keeping this bead out of the flame, getting some hot clear. I'm gonna let it cool just a sec, and then I'm gonna put it over the top. Boom. And flame cut away from the actual bead, heat up some more. Do the same thing. See some of the gold there? Okay, we're going to do it again. And we're going to keep going around the bead. We're getting more gold. See, we get bits of gold here. Can you see that? I'm going to raise it up a bit. So you can see the gold that the chemical reaction from the clear made. So now what I'm going to do, because I didn't have any clear there, we're going to even things up there. I'm going to heat the bead up a little bit and marver the clear on. And we have an encased silver that's got some gold also in it which I think is really pretty. So some glass, it will go very gold. Some glass, it won't go gold at all. But I don't know whether you've tried this before. And it makes it kind of fun for a background. Or for a bead just by itself. Just heating up the clear and pushing it down. I don't want to superheat this at all. The clear does protect the silver pretty well, but I don't want to chance anything. So I'm going rather gently with it. And a little of the extra heat has turned a little bit more of a gold also. Not a lot, but a little bit. Okay, let's heat this up and marble it out and then we'll take a good look at it up close. So I'm warming it up and I'm careful not to get it super hot. I'm watching the color of the clear. Let me just give it a little marver here. And as I said, I really like this um, underneath other things. So maybe I might do a flower decoration or some stringer work or something on top of it. And let's just take a look and see how some of the silver has turned into gold. Okay, here we go. See the silver and the gold? Isn't that pretty? 
and that's how you do it. So if you want to keep your silver 100% silver, you would use a different color to encase it instead of transparent clear. This is my favorite. You can use this uh, very pale aqua, transparent pale aqua, and that won't let it turn gold at all. It will stay silver the entire time. So that's our quickly alchemy lesson, and I hope you have fun using it and maybe make some pretty beads. Other colors underneath are pretty, or just plain clear underneath is nice also. So that's it from me, Marcy, and our alchemy lesson of the day. Take care. Happy torching. Bye.